good kitten internet, and I have a report of an adorable kitty. Right here. It's you, Sin. You're an adorable kitty. Jacinta was born in the year 1998. Uh, she was born to loving parents who unfortunately found themselves in a crossfire between a gang and some police, and died very shortly after she was born. She was raised by her two older half-brothers. Uh, Doni was the one who primarily took care of her when she was a baby, and left once she reached her rebellious teenage years, and Reuben is the one that took care of her for the rest of the time. They effectively sacrificed their educations and livelihoods just to make sure the ends met, she had a roof over her head, and she had a parent. Reuben's the one that really gave her her strong sense of personal morality. Following the laws of the land and so on, that didn't matter as much as following natural law. The ideas of things that should be, gifts should not be squandered, those types of laws are what are basically a core to her personality, a core to her life. Jacinta basically became a case study in rebellion where Reuben loved the inner city and living amongst skyscrapers and, well, it's Camden, so more like hollowed out buildings for a lot of the time. Jacinta wanted nothing more than just work and live on a farm and raise some animals and have delicious cheese and honey. Uh, she... Reuben was more of a meat and potatoes type of guy. Jacinta became a vegetarian. Uh... She worked really hard in high school and ended up getting herself a scholarship to Rutgers where she majored in agriculture and resource management, specializing in urban gardening because that was kind of her compromise with Ruben is that, yes, she's definitely a city kid, but dang it, she wants some fresh lettuce. Don't you want fresh lettuce? Anyway. She, thanks to her some eerily good urban farming, she became furious over the concept of other cities just banning rooftop gardens, at-home chickens, that type of thing. So she decided that she was going to switch up her life a bit and effectively switch over to being pre-law and effectively working on her Juris Doctorate at NYU. And that's where we come to Jacinta. Her home life is just as busy as everything else. Uh, she moved into Bell Harbor, New York, where she found a relatively cheap garage apartment. It's right next to an empty lot, and for some reason there are a pair of goats on that lot. It's kind of weird. It kind of reminds her of the goats that she had nearby her home. She had a pair of goats. She's been beekeeping inside of the city, and she's trying to raise money so she can buy that lot. She's kind of letting goats graze on it without actually owning it. Her beehives kind of remind her of the beehives that she had back at home. They're very prolific with honey. She makes enough honey where she can bring it to her night job, which is working as a bartender, and she actually makes some really nice mead with it and sells that to the bar type of thing while she's Effectively tending to a bunch of drunks. During the day, she's busy taking classes. She pretty much never settles down. She even has a roommate just so she can save some money, although she's never really met her roommate. This is the character description of my latest character in a role-playing campaign that should be starting next week. It was supposed to start today, but we had a couple of outages. Uh, this role play, this is my character's backstory effectively. I have it written down in this gigantic email. It's not even all of the email, but a large chunk of it. I tend to write really heavy backstories for my characters, and that was accidental. I meant to write like two lines. So, this role playing game, as you can tell from the setup, is set in modern times. What you might not be able to tell is that it's effectively set in the Percy Jackson universe, or something akin to the Percy Jackson universe, I should say. 
Um, Jacinta is actually the child of two parents who are each half deity. So Jacinta actually has both the bloodlines of Demeter and the bloodlines of Aristeus. Um, she doesn't actually realize that she's actually been using special powers almost this entire time. Her uncanny urban farming abilities, yeah, that's because the ground is literally more fertile around her than anywhere else. Uh, that, wow. This camera doesn't handle lighting as well as my smartphone. Um, those goats that reminded her of home? Yeah, those are actually the same goats. Same with the bees. They just followed her, and she's blissfully unaware. She's... I'm gonna play her as though she's unaware of most of the things that she's been doing, and she's been using her powers the entire time. So, Jacinta is a, not a character in a D&D &D campaign. I'm sure that those of you that are more familiar with role-playing may have noticed. Jacinta's, well, one, modern times, and two, none of that sounds like a D&D &D class at all. Uh, the closest thing that would come to it is a druid, but that would be about it. Jacinta is a perky character. Perky. Perky is a homebrew role-playing system created by me that is a relatively simplistic universe agnostic system. So, for those of you that are familiar with other systems, think something like GURPS, which is generic, generic user role-playing system. I think that's what it stands for. I'm not sure. Me from the future has probably already edited it in. Anyway, um, think something along those lines, where the system isn't really tied to any one given setting, or even a time period or genre. Perky is kind of like that. Perky, the idea is that... Well, the basic shtick on the system is that you have skills and perks. That's it. There are no stats. You don't really even have much in the way of XP. There's kind of an analog, but not really much. And you roll dice. So if you want to roll your beekeeping skill, you find to see if you have any beekeeping skill or something close enough to the beekeeping skill. The guide, which is the perky term for a game master or dungeon master, tells you, okay, yeah, that's definitely close enough, go ahead and roll it, or even, ah, uh, it's kind of close, but not quite, go ahead and take a small penalty. You roll the skill. Rolling the skill entails you look up on your sheet, you have a skill that uses a die type. It starts out at D2, which D2 is, everybody has this, so for an example, if you're talking about a modern world role-playing system, the average per let's say, New York City in the year 2018, chances are the average person can read. So if you wanted to make a reading check and you don't have any other applicable skill, it's a D2. Going up from there, D4 is the first level of skill that shows that you have some knowledge or training above and beyond the average person. Maybe not a whole bunch, but some. D6, D8, D10, and D12 are the primary dice. Each one of those tiers causes you to basically be significantly better at your various skills. You want to roll that beekeeping skill, and your beekeeping skill check is a d6, you roll a six-sided die. From there, you add or subtract things based off of the environment. So, for instance, beekeeping in an area with lots of plentiful beehives, and you have the uh, smoke that calms down bees and so on, those are giving you environmental advantages, so you would get a bonus. Alternately, trying to beekeep in the middle of New York City without a hive, and you just encounter a swarm of angry Africanized bees, yeah, that's going to probably be an environmental penalty. Generally get the idea. That's the main thing when it comes to perky, beyond the perks themselves. You figure out what skill something is, see if you have something similar, Roll the closest thing that you have to it, adding or subtracting a number based off of what's around you in the environment, and there's your answer. And that's the general system behind Perky. Perks are effectively abilities that you have that are unique to you, or at least unique-ish. For an example, you might have a beekeeping perk that allows you to use beekeeping as though it's a defensive ability. Namely, you are in a fantasy system where you are very good at keeping bees, but you have a perk that allows you to use those bees to help defend yourself, because who wants to punch somebody in the face that has a bunch of bees swarming them, right? That's an example of a perk. That's something unique to you. That is not, 
hey, look, I've done lots of training at beekeeping. This is, I'm freaking weird and defend myself with bees. Zun's running around. Uh, perks have tears. Um, in general, a skill has a perk associated with it. Yep, it's definitely Crazy Cat Hour. Just look. Look at him. He is so cute and adorable and crazy. And that tail, oh, it's not as fluffed anymore. It was quite a bit more fluffed. Sorry, I get distracted easy, easily because of kitties. So, um, yeah, so that's my character. Brief summary of Perky. Uh, I do have the rules that are, they're still being written up, so they're definitely not finalized. This is Perky 2nd Edition. I've changed a lot of the rules, nothing that I had mentioned, because why get into the details on something like that? And, well, that's what I wanted to talk about today. So, that's what I talked about. I'll talk to you all tomorrow. And I accidentally recorded two openings because I had forgotten that I had recorded one this morning. So go ahead and have your second opening. That way all three cats are in this video. We all know that the whole object of Vita is for me to film my cats as much as possible. Goodbye, Internet. Can you say good kitten? Oh, sorry for the electrostatic shock. Meow. <laughs> You are a good kitten, though. All of my kitties are good kittens. Isn't that right, Boo? <coughs> Sorry, I keep shocking you. It must be pretty dry in here. Probably because I don't have the humidifier running right now. Because the heat's off. Anyway, good kitten internet. <coughs>